What's up everybody, it's your boy Showtime Doctor. I'm here with the banner review. I apologize guys I didn't get this out earlier, but I was uh, on the Nikita trail. I just put up the four star video for her advent right now, it's uploaded. So I wanted to go ahead and do this video. I have a lot of videos to make this week guys, and I'm making these two right now. I will make the rest of them over the next couple days, but topics I'm going to talk about. Of course, the new costume thing, uh, some multiplayer stuff, and a couple other things. Miscellaneous. But let's go ahead. We'll get into this banner right now. So, <clears throat> who all this is? Rue. Because I, I can't look it up on there, because for whatever reason on the banners, they always have the five star. That, and I know you summon the five star, but no one uses the five star, so I don't understand why they do that. So I always have to come to the codex. Okay, okay, Shadow. <clears throat> Alright, so the Punisher Verdande. This guy, by the way, is super good. So, on his one, increase water allies attack by 40%. Uh, let's go ahead. I'll go into his passives first, and then we will go over his skills. I use this guy, a friend's unit. I wasn't able to pull one, but this guy is really good on the new dungeon. So, 60% chance on his passive. Has revive unavailable for two turns upon landing a crit strike. Flicks 30% damage when attacking an enemy affected by revive unavailable. 100% chance to apply strike preparation for one turn at the start of the wave. That guarantees that the next attack will be a critical strike. It does what it says, guys. 50% chance to apply strike preparation when attacks. So basically, when he gets attacked, he has a 50% chance to grant himself 100% chance to crit on his next attack. Same thing as his passive here at the beginning of waves. So it's super good. All that stuff, and especially with the, the Revive and Resolve meta we've been dealing with. Say, so what do you mean Resolve, Showtime? Well, here you go. Decreased damage taken from enemies whose HP is 50% or higher by 20%. Pretty sexy. Activates Resolve when Caster takes damage greater than the current HP and restores HP by 50%. So 50% Resolve there. The Caster's turn comes more quickly when Resolve is activated. Increases caster's attack by 30% for two turns, one per battle, after the resolve. So that's his 60 talent. Super good again. Now on his one, you know, it's 100% chance, one target, 35% chance to inflict 20% additional damage as you skill that up. And eventually get the 60% chance to do 30% more damage. His one hits really hard, from my experience, for, for a one. Now his two, this is his bread and butter here. Inflicts penetration damage equal to 80% of attack to all enemies. Increases critical strike damage by 20% for two turns. Applies strike preparation for two turns. That guarantees the next attack will be a critical strike. So that strike preparation that he has on his passives, he can also apply with his two for two turns on a three turn cooldown. So you get him with someone with cooldown reduction. Pretty much have that up all the time, and it's a big AoE too. So, and as you skilled up, base damage goes up, increased to critical strike damage goes up, and eventually the critical strike turns into a three turn buff versus a two turn. Yeah, that gets to be pretty gnarly for 28% damage. Now in his ulti, this is really good too. Inflicts damage equal to 300% of attack that ignores defense to one enemy. 60% chance to disable resolve for two turns. So this guy is also an anti aemon hero, along with an anti-resolve hero like Rue, etc. Inflicts damage equal to 300% of attack to the two enemies adjacent to the target if the attack kills the target. This is super good. So basically, anyone that dies when he kills it with their ult, the people that are standing on the immediate right and left take basically the same damage. And as you can see, when you skill it up, the base damage goes up on both of them, by the way. And the chance to disable resolve goes up. So you get the 85% for three turns. That gets to be pretty cool. And then 480% chance. And eventually also, 
turns to a five turn cooldown when you scale it up all the way. Now, good luck scaling it up all the way, but that's there for you if you get lucky. So this guy's super amazing. He's very... I don't know. He probably is meta-changing. Because he's the first real anti hard anti-resolve that's not like poison. Because he can basically do it on his ultimate instantly and there's no chance to stop it. It's just pants on hit. So super good. Definitely recommend pulling for this hero, guys, if you got the spare currency. And especially with the... New advent that is out. This guy is super amazing for it. All I got to say about him. Hard recommend on him for sure. Kind of regret pulling so much on Morgan now that she's in the normal pool. I, sh I should have seen that coming. But that's just the. <clears throat> so we'll get into Rebecca first. So Rebecca, her base skills, by the way, not as good as her costume, but you know her costume's twenty dollars. So. Her costume makes her amazing, but we'll go into that another. So when you basically get Rebecca here just from the pools, on her one, you know, it's kind of the same thing. This chance to cause additional damage on a one target. Not bad. On her two, it's a cone effect. 192% of attack to a target and two adjacent enemies. They really should have given her something more on this, but... <laughs> And on her three, penetration damage, 300% of attack to a target, and marks target for two turns. On a seven turn cooldown, when you skilled up, it gets to mark target to three turns, or under 80%. Leadership, light and fire, multi strike chance by 20. You know, not bad. Especially with the new hero, that's a 100% chance to decrease all skill cooldowns by two turns upon killing an enemy. So if your Becca's hitting hard, Getting their cooldowns back quicker. Now, Sign of Evil, inflict 30% damage when attacking a marked target. As you can see, her 3 puts up mark, but it also uses her ultimate. That's kind of weird. The way that they build her initially was kind of weird. But if you get her Shaman outfit, if you guys I don't mind blowing 20 bucks on it, it makes her super amazing. I'll go over that in another video when I cover the outfits, but you can look for yourself. So, Rebecca by herself, eh. But Rebecca with the costume, if you're willing to put the money down. Probably one of the stronger units in the game right now. The other. Oh, here's Electra. So, Electra, she used to be top tier tank. Unfortunately, she's been usurped by Eamon and Ian for the most part, but she's still really good. A lot of people will talk badly about her now. So she still has the fire allies increase attack by 60% if they're all fire. Super good leadership. Her passive, her regular passive, 50% chance to burn the attacker for 30% of attack for two turns when attacked. That gets, that gets to be pretty good. Because she's, she's taunting, so people are hitting her a lot. Recovers 20% HP at the start of the turn and has a 100% chance to reflect damage equal to 50% of attack upon attack. I assume they mean attacker there. If the caster is Fire Incarnate, Fire Incarnate is a buff that happens when she ulties. We will go over that more later. Her 60 passive, guaranteed counter upon critical strike damage. 70% chance to cast Blaze, dealing an additional, or excuse me, additional damage equal to 200% of attacker's attack when attacked for two. This is very easy to misconstrue. Um, Real quick before we go into that, guaranteed counterattack upon critical strike damage. Usually good, not so good in SIDS. But generally really good. Now, this Blaze debuff is a debuff that goes on the enemy. And the 200% of attacker's attack, that is someone from your team attacking. So if it's like your hard hitter, like your Morgan or whatever, it's going to do an additional 200% of that character's damage for two turns. So, you know, you if that happens to get on and then you have a Rue or someone with their next turn that doesn't hit so hard, because I believe that Blaze actually gets consumed after the first hit. So make sure that whoever's attacking is someone that has high attack damage because it's based on the attacker's attack. 
when that happens. Honor 1, inflicts damage equal to 100% of attack to one target, 45% chance to taunt. Pretty strong taunt for 1. 35% uh, chance to inflict damage equal to 20% of attack to the enemies right next to the target, so in a cone effect. Um, the only aggravating thing about this is, especially when you're fighting like a Cowley or something, she misses a lot. It's to be annoying, but the way it is. As you scale this up, base damage goes up, chance to taunt goes up, and the taunt eventually goes to two turns when you scale it up to the six. And it becomes a 60% chance to inflict 40% attack to enemies right and left. So, can be really good, can be hit or miss. For two, he becomes Fire Incarnate for two turns when she hits her two. If you forgot Fire Incarnate, essentially. He's reflecting more damage when she's Fire Incarnate. That gets to be pretty good. And 100% chance to grant damage immunity to all allies for a turn. So basically anything that's not penetration damage can't harm you. 40% chance to burn for 30% of attack to all enemies for two turns. That is a, once she casts a skill, it's an AoE effect. It has a chance to go off. It's fairly low at the beginning, but if it gets skilled up, it gets to 70%. Fire Incarnate goes to three turns. That's the stealth buff. And the enemy burn is three turns. <clears throat> so. And then on her three, inflict penetration damage equal to 120% of attack to all enemies. 35% chance to decrease their attack by 30% for two turns. Uh, the best part about this is you can hit stealth units. And it also has a heavy chance to decrease attack the higher you skill it up. You know, it does decent damage, does penetration damage. Damage isn't anything to write home about, usually. But so, for her, usually you want to skill up her 1 just to get that taunt percentage up. And then you want to skill her 3 just to get that attack down and percentage up. And then I forgot to mention the skills on the other heroes. Um, so for Rebecca, you want to skill her ulti, that's her 3, just so she hits harder. Uh, unless you're doing the costume thing, that'll be a separate video. And on uh, for Dondi, either is two or is three, but I would recommend is three, just because you want that to hit harder because he has such a high chance to get a hundred percent chance to crit. So you probably want to skill up his three first. But overall, Electra, you know, if you got one, solid tank. Not a mon amazing I'm enjoy. Or Ian, because most of us should have access to Ian right now. Um, you know, uh, in the guild battle, Ian's a superior tank in most cases, except when you're fighting against fire. And even then, you know, it could be worse. Alright, then the last hero we... But if you happen to get Electra, and you're new to the game, Electra will take you pretty far. Now we go to Rue. Rue is enjoying what is probably her last two weeks as being, uh, basically has no answer. When Janice comes out, Janice is going to whoop Rue hard. But, for now, Rue is one of the most solid heroes in the game right now, and will continue to be when Janice is out. It'll just be a little bit hairier in PvP. So her passive, or her leadership rather, Increase fire and wind allies HP recovery amount by 20. So decent. On her one, or excuse me, her uh, passive here, this is really good. Remove damage immunity and shields from all enemies at the start of the turn. Um, damage immunity and shields are very meta right now in PvP. And even in some of the dungeons that you go into, it's just really nice to be able to just be like, buy shield, buy damage immunity. So it works out pretty well. Restores HP of the caster and the ally with the lowest HP by 20% when the caster tries to remove an enemy. Um, <clears throat> this is usually chance on hit. But basically if the enemy has a buff and Rue feather dusts him with her one, um, there's a chance that she's going to heal herself for a great amount of damage. Doesn't always happen. And there's also a chance... That she's going to heal whoever the lowest person is as long as they don't have poison or whatever on them for 20% of their health. So her one's very strong. We'll get to that later. Now on her ulti, 
she removes one abnormal status from all allies at the end of the turn. This is an amazing skill. It removes things like taunt, stun, attack down. No, actually, it doesn't. Really. But, you know, everything that's considered an abnormal status, uh, leap, that type of thing. That's really strong, especially from all allies at the end of a turn. Uh, activates resolve upon taking damage greater than the caster's HP. So you take all her health, she's still alive. Or at least one more hit. It restores all allies' HP by 30% and decrease all skill cooldowns by one upon death. So even if she dies, help and restore uh, cooldowns and puts out some healing once per battle. So that's pretty strong too. So just her passives are pretty insane. Honor one, this is a cone effect. A cone effect for those of you that are newer basically means you're attacking one person, anyone that's to their right or immediate left is also going to take damage. And inflicts damage equal to 60% of attack to one target and two adjacent and 35% chance to remove one buff. So if she removes the buff, then she's going to heal uh, a teammate for 20%. And she also has a pretty high chance of healing herself for a lot of life. As you skill this up, the base damage goes up and the chance to remove the buff goes up until it gets to 60%. That's pretty good. Hunter 2, probably one of the better skills in the game here. Restores the HP of an ally and two adjacent allies by 30% and removes all debuffs. That does include things that are not abnormal statuses, such as poison. Grants abnormal status immunity to the target for two turns. Abnormal status immunity basically means they can't be stunned, they can't be silenced. I believe it's silent. I'm not sure about that. Uh, they can't be slept, they can't be taunted, etc. That's a pretty cool skill. And as you skill it up, the percentage heal goes up. And eventually it gets to 70%. That is a fat heal on a three turn cooldown. Pretty good. And on her ulti, her ulti is one of the best revives in the game. Probably the best overall. It only does one person, but look at what it does for them. Revive one ally and restore 40% of HP. Turns come more quickly for that ally. Basically, they take their turn next. And increases attack by 25% for one turn. So the ally that gets res, their attack increases. So you get them up, and it also resets all their skill cooldowns. So you can immediately get up an ult. So it's super strong. As you skilled up, the percentage health you come back with goes higher as well as the attack damage buff. Until eventually you're rocking 70% HP and 50% attack buff. Super good, super amazing. One of the craziest things you can do in this game is res another healer. Who then has all their cooldowns and then either reses or heals. But you can also do it to DPS. You can res them, they burn their ult. They got 50% attack damage bonus. Generally works out pretty well. So Rue, Rue is definitely, if you don't have a Rue, Rue is definitely worth pulling for. <clears throat> and we'll get back to them. And for those who don't know, they have put in all of the non-standard characters back into banners. So you can see the pictures here. All of these guys are now in the banners. They used to only be on you know, certain banners, their own banners, but you can now get copies of Cynthia, Jacqueline, Morgan, Edwin, Eamon, Nix, Rouge McDuck, and uh, Claude here. So. And then once again, they have all the bonus stuff. They brought the rainbows back, which is odd because they didn't have the rainbows before, but eventually after you summon 10 times, if you, if you didn't get Verdande, you'll get Verdande. We got two weeks on this banner, so. Overall, Verdande's worth pulling, Rue's worth pulling. Electra's pretty much whatever if you can get your hands on an Ian if you're in a good guild. Rebecca, if you have her outfit, she'll be amazing, but otherwise. I mean, we all get a free Rebecca, I believe, so. I believe that still goes on with new players. <clears throat> Getting sick again. But yeah, guys, that's it. So that is your banner review. And the topics I'll be looking forward to covering this week. Um, 
I'll give my thoughts on the costume situation and the rage and stuff going on there. Um, I'm going to try to make an appeal to Netmarble slash Mobirum about multiplayer and making it more worthwhile. And, you know, there's a couple of little small things here and there I'll bring up too. Different things I'd like to see. I'll go over... Uh... Ugh, God, there's just like so much to go over with the costume. But with the costume, sorry guys. Um, I I have like two or three other things to say, but I forget them right at the, at the moment. But anyways, guys. So I'm Showtime Dr. Showtime Doctor. You can find me on Twitch. You found my YouTube. Look in the notes. There's a link to the Discord. If you feel like it, come in. Share your experiences. Ask questions, etc. Uh, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Showtime DR. I stream mostly evening times and Pacific Standard Time, California. Cali time. So, and that's it for me, guys. I'm going to hell to bed and pretend this game does not exist for about 8 to 10 hours. Catch you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out.